Right, on to uh, Times uh, Network, a mega mirror now exclusive. In fact, now that the Tamil Nadu Finance Minister Palanivel Tiagarajan is one of the most outspoken critics of Prime Minister Modi and the union government and its schemes. In an exclusive conversation with Mirror Now's Dharani, the state finance minister speaks on a range of issues making headlines, from freebies to alleged central agencies' misuse, from GST council meet to the central bank. Take a look at this exclusive conversation. Whether it's union government or the in a state government, it's the responsibility of any government to provide good education, good health care, uh, you know, good sanitary services, etc. So can they be called as free, be, like if it's given free to the public? No, I, I, I'm telling you explicitly, the term means nothing. It's not, you know, whether it's provided free or at a low cost or a subsidized and all that is not the uh, indication of whether it's a freebie. The freebie itself is a meaningless term. Let me try and take the debate to some place where it should have some meaning. And this is not a political issue, it's not a BJP versus DMK or YSR Congress issue. The profound issues here are three or four. The first issue is, who is responsible for spending the money of the people? In most democracy, that is the elected House of Representatives. In the United States, which has a presidential form of democracy, it's the Senate and the House, what they call collectively Congress, the elected members. In the United Kingdom, which has a parliamentary style democracy like ours, it is the parliament. In Delhi, it is the parliament. In Tamil Nadu, it is the legislature. These are the people endowed in the constitution with the right to both receive and spend the government's money, right? Taxation, etc. Most countries, it is not in the scope of democracy that a Supreme Court gets to decide, or any court, how the money should be spent. So that's the first substantive point I want to make. The second substantive point I want to make is that the Constitution allows very clearly for different but equal levels of government. One is the union, one is the state. In each of these, we have certain powers to raise revenues and to spend them. Those powers cannot be crossed just because of a political party. That is to say, neither is a DMK MLA of South, uh, sorry, it is a DMK MP of South Chennai have any control or access into how the government of Tamil Nadu's budget is set. Nor does the MP of Varanasi have any control or say into how the government of Uttar Pradesh's budget is set. Only the MLAs get to have that vote. No MLA gets to say how the union budget is set. Only the MPs get to have that vote. So there is a clear separation in the constitution and it doesn't have any room for Federally elected, union elected MPs, even if they become ministers or prime minister, at the beginning they were an MP. That's how they got to be there. No MP gets to say anything, right? So least of all a Varnasi MP telling the government of Tamil Nadu how is the least uh, kind of actionable because even the DMK MP of South Chennai in a DMK elected state government doesn't have even any say in the state, yeah, in the state finances, yeah. right? So that's the second substantive issue. The third substantive issue is, in fact, the union government controls state spending and state budgets in ways beyond what was originally envisioned or practiced in the past. So that you are telling after the BJP came to power or before yeah, that? Some of it was in the constitution before, but especially after the FRBM Act of 2003 and after the current BJP regime came to power, they have picked up another clause of the constitution that was never enforced before, but now they're using it. And they effectively control the state's borrowing and state's finances in ways that have never been done before 2014. So there's not that much room left for any debate. You see, the government of India gets to decide how much we can borrow, gets to decide whether our deficit's 3% or 4% or 3.5%, even though, according to the constitution, that's not the case. In the constitution, the union government sets its own and the state government sets its own. But using 293.3, article of the constitution, the union government says that whenever a state owes us money, we get to let it borrow or not borrow outside. So using that, they put borrowing limits on every state every year. So already the union government completely controls the state's total borrowing and total fiscal book. Now if you say, within that borrowing, how is the money spent? then that is not just anti-constitutional, that is not just an unenvisioned by anybody, it is clear outright authoritarianism or dictatorship okay. 
if people who are elected to run the union government start interfering, and that's not in politics, I'm saying it would be equally bad were they to tell the UP chief minister how he should spend money as telling the Tamil Nadu chief minister how he should spend money. That's exactly why in the BJP, forget the differences between the prime minister and DMK. The UP government is run by a, UP, uh, by a BJP majority administration. Yes? Yeah. In that government, the chief minister has announced free bus rides 10 days back. Is so that can acceptable? Can that be called as a welfare yeah, scheme or a freebie? freebie? And is that acceptable to the, is that part of the Ravdi culture? I don't know. Right? So that's why I'm saying this debate has a lot of noise and very little enlightenment, very little actual substance to it.